Now you can feed me all this lonely tough guy crap, but I know one day I'm gonna save your ass and you're probably gonna wanna kiss me. Wacko. <laughs> The Grand Theft Auto series is well known for its roster of famous voices. From the cream of movie talent, You haven't forgotten about us, have you, boy? The global chart toppers, Hey, Phil, you ready for the concert? How's everything looking? Good. I think, unless Barry's got some more surprises in store. There have been many major celebrities who've graced the streets and radio stations of rock stars open worlds. Get away from Mr. Faustin's daughter. F*** you! This ain't Russia and we ain't communists! GTA's journey to big-name actors began in 1999's Grand Theft Auto 2, which included a live-action short film for the game's introductory sequence. In it, a criminal named Claude Speed carries out jobs for various crime syndicates before he's taken out. Relatively unknown English actor Scott Maslin, star of UK soaps The Bill and EastEnders, played Claude in this short. There was a room full of witnesses. I'm sorry, Gav, but he's got a copper as an alibi. But from small beginnings grew superstar lineups. As the series entered its 3D era in 2001, developer DMA Design and Rockstar Games upped the ante and cast some serious names to voice its game characters. Sorry, babe, I'm an ambitious girl. You're just small time. From Grand Theft Auto 3 onwards, the games would include famous names from the worlds of Hollywood and the music industry. But Rockstar's relationship with stars hasn't been a smooth journey. As we'll explore here, the studio's approach to celebrity talent is very different today than it was in the star-studded PS2 years. So follow him, and if he's ratting us out, kill him. Grand Theft Auto 3 arrived on the PlayStation 2 in October 2001. While the previous Grand Theft Auto games were 2D, the move to three dimensions for GTA 3 brought with it a step up in storytelling ambition and world building. This could be heard in the radio stations, which would go on to feature some A-list names in future entries. But for this Liberty City set game, the main celebrity talent voiced members of the Italian Mafia at the heart of the game's plot. With a story influenced by mobster movies, it was a canny decision by DMA Design and Rockstar Games to use actors who'd been in landmark crime dramas such as The Sopranos and Goodfellas. These famous voices would work in contrast to the central character Claude, who was a silent protagonist. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you knew Lapdog has everything covered, and isn't he big and strong? Those famous Mafia movie veterans included Frank Vincent as mob boss Salvatore Leone. Me and the fellas need to talk business, so you're gonna look after my girl for the evening. Hey, Maria, move your butt. Vincent has credits in Martin Scorsese classics such as Raging Bull and Casino, but his most significant role in relation to GTA 3 is almost certainly mobster Billy Bats in Goodfellas. Oh, oh, come here. Christ, let me go say hello. Hey, Billy, how are you? Bringing gravitas and a serpentine charm to his portrayal, he usually gets a taxi home after work, so follow him. And if he's ratting us out, Kill him. Vincent reprised his role in future GTA games, Liberty City Stories, and San Andreas. Well, Ken, if I'd for me, I'm a straight killer. You know the Ferrellis are sending over a crew to hit me. Heard alongside Vincent was the unmistakable New York accent of actress Debbie Mazar. Spider, let's go visit Chico and get some party treats. He's at the rail station at the Chinatown waterfront, I think. Perhaps best known for playing Ray Liotta's fiery lover in Goodfellas. Her brassy performance as Maria Latore, the scheming wife of Salvatore, helped drive GTA 3's story and was the perfect foil to the stoic silence of the player character. I couldn't let him do that. I mean, the worst thing is, it's all my fault because I told him we were an item. Don't ask me why, I don't know. While these actors may not be the most instantly recognizable names, the following will surely ring a bell. Michael Madsen. Famous for his ear-splitting performance in Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, Madsen voiced the surly Tony Capriani. Okay, I've had enough of this shit. We're gonna finish the triads in Liberty once and for all. It was a brief role, but one that benefited from his recognizable gravelly tones. If they hadn't done what I told them not to do, they'd still be alive. Sadly, Madsen only provided his voice for the Tony Soprano-influenced Capriani just once. Voice actor Danny Mastro Giorgio would take over duties for prequel game Liberty City Stories. Mr. Leone, I thought we got history. I mean, I've done a lot for this family. Speaking of The Sopranos, that shows Joe Pantoliano, who played Ralph C. Ferretto in the HBO crime series, was tapped by Rockstar to voice Luigi Gortarelli. If you need a piece, go around back of abnegation opposite the subway. You may also recognize Pantoliano as the traitorous cipher in The Matrix. Here, he plays a low-ranking member of the Leone Mafia family, and hands out some of GTA 3's earliest missions. Now I got girls all over town walking the street. Get them to the ball, they'll make a bundle. 
Stand-up and character actor Michael Rapaport from Beautiful Girls and True Romance voiced Joey Leone, Salvatore's mechanic son. Joey doesn't feature heavily, appearing in a scattering of early missions. But with Rapaport's delivery, the actor brings a strong dose of New York to Liberty City with that distinctive accent. He's fitted it with a bomb or park the car where you found it then sit back and watch the whole show. Rappaport continued his gaming credits when he was cast as Troy Bradshaw in the GTA-inspired Saints Row series. Load a car up with some explosives, you could blow a hole right into the evidence locker and never have to fire a shot. Rockstar would head to Miami in the next GTA entry, Vice City, which featured a story inspired by Scarface. But before the studio jetted off to Florida, it brought a little of Miami to Liberty City by casting Robert Loggia in Grand Theft Auto 3. Loggia played drug kingpin Frank Lopez in Brian De Palma's crime epic, and took on a tangentially related role for GTA 3 as Detective Ray Machowski. A bent cop, Machowski hires Claude to carry out some ruthless hits, before fleeing the city to evade capture. It would be Loggia's only involvement in in the game series. Carl McLachlan has been a recognisable face since he made his name in David Lynch's Twin Peaks. Oh, man, that hits the spot. <laughs> and has also been seen in the likes of Showgirls and Sex in the City. For Grand Theft Auto 3, the actor lent his voice talent to Donald Love, a media baron that turns out to have cannibal tastes. My god, this is good. It tastes just like chicken, but somehow more, uh, sentient. He's overseeing construction in Fort Staunton, using Claude's many skills to instigate a gang war to drive down property prices. I've noticed the Yakuza and the Colombians are far from friends. Let's capitalize on this business opportunity. Love became a recurring character, with appearances in Liberty City Stories and Vice City. Sadly, McLachlan never returned to the role, and so The Sopranos actor Will Janovitz voiced Love in the former, Vito was blowing the security guard. How little they know of life's real pleasures. While Canadian ice hockey player and occasional actor Cam Neely, who has played minor parts in Dumb and Dumber, its sequel, and other comedies, voiced him in the latter. And then I put him in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Grand Theft Auto 3 opens with a cutscene in which Claude escapes a prison transport alongside fellow inmate 8-Ball. The wily 8-Ball guides the player to their first mission, and his strong voice belonged to none other than Gangstar co-founder Guru, real name Keith Edward Elam. Gangstar would feature on the soundtrack of San Andreas and GTA 4, and the musician would reprise his role as 8-Ball in Liberty City Stories. Alright, I got what you boys need, but it's gonna cost. One cameo that's not technically a celebrity, but is a neat easter egg, is the manager of the Chinatown branch of Bank of Liberty, who is voiced by Dan Hauser, the former vice president of Rockstar and writer and producer of GTA 3. Ah, oh, Mr Chong sent you, did he? Let's go and pay the fellow a visit. With veterans of Goodfellas, The Sopranos and more, it was quite the cast for DMA Design and Rockstar's first 3D Grand Theft Auto. But for its next entry in the series, the developer cranked its casting game up to another gear. For the highly anticipated follow-up, Rockstar headed to its version of Miami, Vice City, for a tale of drugs, excess and betrayal. Vice City featured an even more glittering cast than its predecessor, led by the series' first fully voiced protagonist in Tommy Vicetti. Rockstar tapped none other than Goodfellas star Ray Liotta for this headline role. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster who gave Vicetti a brash and hot-headed demeanor well suited to the game's 1986 setting. Cortez sent me, just give me the damn chips. Oh, back off. By his own admission, the late Liotta was not a gamer, but he seemed pleased by the title's success. Vice City became the fastest selling game for its time, shifting 1.4 million copies within two days of its October 29, 2002 release. In a 2003 episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien, Liotta was asked about his experience on Vice City. It was fun, you know, you just sitting there cursing at people. But in an interview with IGN before the game's launch, Liotta said the recording process had been a great challenge, and that it's an intensive process. You're creating a character that's not there before, he said. I'm the player, so you see my guy, but it's kind of like I'm you or you're me. The scenarios that go on, it's exhausting. <laughs> but you gotta let people play that game? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a huge hit, that game. Unbelievable. While the crime series has mostly been set in the United States, with the sole exception of the 1999 expansion Grand Theft Auto London 1969, Rockstar has employed various British actors in the games. For Vice City, it hired London geezer Danny Dyer to portray British music manager Kent Paul. Paul was a drug-addled, fast-talking manager to Scottish metal band Love Fist. Listen to me. I'm missing 20 keys and a lot of cash. Drugs, mate. It's a mugs game. What do you know about it? 
One of the group's members, Jez Torrent, was voiced by Kevin McKidd. We need some drugs, pal! Gotta get on the old love <laughs> yeah, yeah, fish, yeah, nice. you know? Who's been seen in Trainspotting and the HBO BBC series Rome. McKidd would return to the world of video games several years later, lending his Scottish tones to John Soap McTavish in 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and its sequel. All snipers, this is McTavish. Stand by Dinky. Continuing the British theme, musician Phil Collins portrayed himself in Vice City Stories, the Vice City prequel which launched initially on the PlayStation Portable, giving him the distinction of the first ever real-life celebrity to appear as themselves in a GTA game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Barry, we're safe, right? Meanwhile, Collins' in-game manager, Barry Micklethwaite, was voiced by veteran actor Timothy Spall, who has credits on the Harry Potter movies and The Last Samurai. James wouldn't have wanted to be killed. Oh, Dad. Oh, Dad was bad. Oh, shut it till you'll be finding a new manager. Players can watch Collins perform a rendition of In the Air Tonight in game, a song that also features in the pilot episode of 1980s TV series Miami Vice, which was an influential touchstone for the game. With Miami Vice being such a big influence on Vice City, it's no surprise that one of the game's main cast members was played by an actor from the show. Few players will forget the character of Lance Vance from the game, played by Miami Vice star Philip Michael Thomas. He played Detective Ricardo Rico Tubbs in the TV series. But adopted a more criminal persona for Vice City and its PSP prequel. There goes my careful planning blown to shit! Thanks to you! You screwed up real good, Lance! He killed my brother! What do you expect me to do, mow his lawns? Puerto Rican actor Luis Guzman, from Carlito's Way and Boogie Nights, did a remarkable job with the unctuous and short-tempered drugs baron Ricardo Diaz. Who do you think you are, you piece of plastic shit? Oh! Screw you! Guzman has also appeared in Miami Vice, in the episode The Prodigal Son, playing the ambitious Miguel Revilla. What surprises you got in that bag, huh? But Vice City's supporting cast looked to even higher heights than its TV inspirations. Cubans leader Umberto Rabina was voiced by legendary Mexican-American actor Danny Trejo. Oh yeah? You come here, tough guy! You think you'll take me on? You think you'll play stupid with me? No, I think you're playing plenty stupid enough for both of us. While the gun-obsessed Phil Cassidy... Son, I can shoot a fly off your head at 80 feet! Oh really? was voiced by actor Gary Boosie for his Vice City appearance. Meanwhile, veteran actor Lee Majors of 1980s TV show The Fall Guy provided the voice of Big Mitch Baker, leader of the Vice City Bikers. Hey, Rossetti, Cougar says you can handle a bike pretty good. For one of Vice City's main mission givers, film director Steve Scott, Rockstar enlisted Easy Rider and Blue Velvet actor Dennis Hopper. Oh yeah, man, hey, like I'm stoned, you know, man? But like, you know, I saw a satellite. In the game, Vercetti helps the shark and mashed potato obsessed porn producer by bringing in Candy Sucks and Mercedes Cortez to work on his film. Have you ever thought about. Um... Well, first, we're gonna need some good looking bras. Yeah, girls are fine, but you. Wow! Feruza Bolk, who starred in witchy movie The Craft and appeared in American History X, lent her voice to Mercedes, daughter of drugs baron Juan Cortez. Mercedes? You try living with it. Anyway, let me point out some of our more distinguished guests. Her scene partner was a more notorious choice, though. Sucks was voiced by real-life adult film actress Jenna Jameson. According to Jacked, the outlaw story of Grand Theft Auto, Jameson was offered $5,000 for the role, which she accepted as her boyfriend was a fan of the previous game. Candy Sucks would become so famous within the GTA universe as to get her own star on the Vinewood Walk of Fame, which can be seen in Grand Theft Auto V. The potential for crookedness in the real estate industry has been a theme in successive GTA games, and Texan businessman Avery Carrington was one of the prime drivers of shady property dealings in Vice City. Rockstar hired the rich tones of Hollywood sex icon Burt Reynolds for the role of Carrington. Oh, I love your suits. It must be a bitch getting a size 68 extra fat. Unfortunately, while Reynolds does great work in Vice City... Would you like a drop of the old Kentucky? No thanks. A clean thinker! I like that! He allegedly wasn't so easy to work with. In a 2018 interview with Vulture, Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser recalled a time when he and Reynolds got into an argument over the direction of a scene from Vice City, which ended with the star shouting, Get the limey out of here! You getting this down, you four-eyed prick? The character of Kem Rosenberg, a lawyer and business manager, appears in Vice City and San Andreas. Are gonna come down here and rip my head off. It's ridiculous. 
ridiculous. And both times, he is voiced by prolific character actor William Fickner, whose credits include Heat and Prison Break. Rosenberg seems to be inspired by Sean Penn's character David Kleinfeld, another drug-addled lawyer who aids criminals in 1993's Carlito's Way. He's gonna swim off the island. Gonna swim? Yeah. Or he's gonna drown. In GTA San Andreas, protagonist CJ helps Rosenberg out of his predicament with Liberty City's Salvatore Leone. But please, you gotta come with me. I, I, I'm gonna squirt my ass all over the floor. Just this once, please, please, please. Okay, please. okay, chill. Actor Tom Sizemore, another alumni of the movie Heat. <laughs> well, you know, for me, the action is the juice. Voice Sonny Ferrelli, Vassetti's boss who resides off screen during most of the events of Vice City. We treat him like an old friend and keep him busy out of town, okay? We've been talking about expanding down south, right? Robert Davey provided the voice of Mercedes's father, Juan Cortez. Buenas noches. I understand you are here on the behalf of Mr. Rosenberg. But that's not all. The lead singer of Blondie, the legend that is Debbie Harry, can be heard in Vice City as she voices Doris, Kaufman Cab's dispatcher. Anywho, I guess you better get on with the things are gonna change around here, crap. Maybe threaten one of the drivers. Her band songs, Atomic and Heart of Glass, can be heard on the game's radio station Wave 103. Rapper Luther Roderick Campbell, aka Uncle Luke, also appeared as DJ Luke on Fresh 105 FM. Vice City! Vice Bitches! Club Malibu! I'm going that next! Let's go! Other cameos include American football player Lawrence Taylor, who played the steroid addled former footballer BJ Smith. We have the Vice City Mamba star titan, BJ, always the charmer. I blocked down on him and then I put him in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas ramped up the series in a major way, with an enormous map that included fictional versions of Los Angeles, San Francisco and Las Vegas, as well as country towns and rural landscapes. This was the colossal stage for a gritty story set in the early 1990s, taking inspiration from the rivalry between gangs Blood and Crips, the LAPD Rampart scandal, and the 1992 Los Angeles riots. That story was the perfect script for another slew of big-name voices. For its third PS2-era GTA, Rockstar continued to cast celebrities, with rappers and hip-hop artists well represented. For the player character of Carl C.J. Johnson, however, Rockstar turned to a relative unknown. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Christopher Bellard, who goes by the stage name Young Melee, was in his mid-twenties when San Andreas launched in October 2004. The role of CJ was his first acting job. Born in Los Angeles, the rapper was witness to gang violence and poverty growing up. He was brought in to audition after one of the main writers of San Andreas, rapper DJ Pooh, called Melee and the two talked about music. Unknown to the young rapper, the chat occurred over speakerphone, with Rockstar staff encouraging DJ Pooh to bring him in after hearing the conversation. Coincidentally, Melee is the cousin of Sean Solo Fontino, who provided the voice of Franklin in GTA V. While Rockstar went low-key for CJ, it aimed high for many of the supporting cast. The most famous name to grace San Andreas has to be Samuel L. Jackson, who played Officer Frank Tempenny. Intimidate those who intimidate others, Carl. It's my job. The veteran actor may these days be most popular for his role as Nick Fury in the MCU, but at the time of San Andreas, his credits in Menace to Society, Pulp Fiction, and even a minor role in Goodfellas meant he was perfect for Grand Theft Auto. What do they call it? They call it uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. His commanding tones brought much to a role that required charisma and villainy in equal measure. I like having all you bastards doing my job for me, blowing each other's guts all over the side. Dumb bastards. Frank Tempenny headed the Crash Unit, a supremely corrupt organization within the Los Santos Police Department that siphoned profits and supplies from the street gangs that they were supposed to stop, and committed acts of brutality in the process. Tempenny acted alongside his deputy, Officer Eddie Pulaski. All right, that's good. That's deep enough for two. Who was voiced by Reservoir Dogs actor Chris Penn. Penn, who sadly died in 2006, was the younger brother of Sean Penn. The actor also appeared alongside Debbie Mazar, who reprised her role of Maria Latore from GTA 3 for San Andreas in the dog movie Beethoven Second. Frank Vincent also returned as Don Salvatore Leone, with the game even taking CJ to Liberty City for one mission. How would you like to hit the St. Mark's Bistro? A hit in Liberty City? Cool, but I'm gonna need some backup. Take who you want! CJ's family was a memorable feature of San Andreas, and Faison Love, an actor in comedies such as Don't Be a Menace and Fear of a Black Hat, played the role of Sweet Johnson, CJ's tough brother. The Johnson brothers are rolling again. 
Playing CJ and Sweet's sister Kendall was rapper Yolanda Yo-Yo Whittaker, a frequent collaborator with Ice Cube in the early 1990s, and a player of minor parts in movies such as Menace to Society and Boys in the Hood. Let me guess, Sweet. Senseless killing right, but a boyfriend from the South Side wrong? Rockstar leaned strongly on hip-hop vibes for San Andreas, with one of the earliest gangster rappers Ice-T cast as musician Mad Dog. That's my money! And those are my hoes! And that's my video he's shooting today! In the game, Mad Dog's rapping career falters after CJ steals his rhyme book, but they later join forces. Also coming from the rap scene was The Game. While he was still up and coming when San Andreas launched, The Game, real name Jason Terrell Taylor, was hired to play minor antagonist B Dup. You know what, man? Get the f out of here for you be laying on your back. Born in Compton, The Game has since gone on to greater fame following his discovery by Dr. Dre and the release of his debut major label album, The Documentary, in 2005. That's what you benefit with the mother Dr. Dre beats. A legend of the West Coast hip hop sound, Aaron Taylor, better known as MC8, led Compton's Most Wanted, an early gangster rap group. The group's 1992 hit Hood Took Me Under features on San Andreas' soundtrack. In addition, MC8 voiced the character of Ryder in the game. Man, what's this? Shit look ridiculous. No respect for the hood. All clean as shit. An abrasive personality that seems inspired by the late Easy e leader of the group N.W.A. Meanwhile, another music legend, Chuck D of hip-hop group Public Enemy, voiced DJ Forthright MC on the in-game Playback FM radio station. Forthright MC hopes you relieved yourself because you're going to shit when I play this record. San Andreas' music industry cast is drawn from beyond the worlds of rap and hip-hop, though. Rockstar also hired British music icon Sean Ryder, lead singer for the band The Happy Mondays. Ryder's thick Manchurian accent can be heard emerging from the lips of Maka, the singer of a touring British rock band called the Gurning Chimps. You are any speckled doves, boss? I'm peeking on one right now! Fellow Manchester band The Stone Roses can also be heard in the game, with their signature track Fool's Gold playing on Radio X. There's also a bona fide rock legend in San Andreas. In the 2000s, Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose was a relatively reclusive figure, so the fact that Rockstar got the singer to be involved was quite the coup. Rose voiced the DJ Tommy the Nightmare Smith, who hosts the game's classic rock radio station K Dust. I can't believe I get to play music for a living, even if it is other people's. The DJ also has a star on the Vinewood Walk of Fame in GTA V. GTA San Andreas also featured plenty of regular actors. Clifton Powell, an actor with credits in Menace to Society, Dead Presidents, and who has a memorable turn in Rush Hour as Chris Tucker's character's cousin, The little girl. What little girl? The little Chinese girl. I don't know nothing about no little Chinese girl. was cast as the treacherous Big Smoke. Oh my god, what's up? <laughs> And as Caesar, a member of the Aztecs gang and boyfriend to CJ's sister Kendall, Rockstar casts Clifton Collins Jr., who has appeared in movies such as Capote and the HBO series Westworld. It's hard cash, you're pink slip in the pod. Rockstar also returned to the cast of Easy Rider for San Andreas, this time employing Dennis Hopper's co-star, the late Peter Fonda. He can be heard as the weed farmer and conspiracy theorist, The Truth. Whoa, man. I never thought I'd see that. A fed out smoking me, huh? Actor and comedian David Cross, known for his role as Tobias Funke in Arrested Development. It, it's, it's a fire sale. Oh my god! We're having a fire sale! Provides the voice of Zero, the owner of toy store Zero RC. No. I won the prize in the science fair. <laughs> First prize, that is. The late Charles Murphy, the old brother of Eddie Murphy, was famed for his hilarious turns in The Chappelle Show, and he adds his comedic delivery to San Andreas as the sleazy pimp Jizzy B. See, I only got two eyes, and in these streets you got to have more than that. Radio host and actor Kurt Alexander, better known as Big Boy, voiced Grove Street gang member Barry Big Bear Thorne. I'm tired Bear, of what the f you doing? I'm tired Come of on, man! And I'm tired of doing your f***ing housework! Oh, shit! I'm free! And comedian Andy Dick played Maurice on West Coast Talk Radio's gardening segment. I believe all of life's answers can be found in something as simple as a flower. Finally, super character actor James Woods added his trademark mercurial charm to the role of Mike Torino, a wily government agent that eventually teams up with CJ. This is a setback, but doing 20 to life is a little more than that, comprende amigo? 
For its next mainline Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar Games started to move away from casting celebrities. As the aforementioned interview with Vulture explained, Dan Hauser revealed that working with celebrities such as Burt Reynolds could be tricky. He also mentioned the trouble he had with Chuck D on San Andreas, even needing to ask another director to step in. Hauser explained, We don't bring in name actors anymore because of their egos and, most important of all, because we believe we get a better sense of immersion using talented actors whose voices you don't recognise. Additionally, Rockstar aimed to write a more original story for Grand Theft Auto 4, one that didn't pay such heavy homage to classics in the crime movie genre. In short, the stage was set for a game that would be less reliant on big names. LCPD! Freeze, mother I said freeze! Nevertheless, GTA 4 did feature a scattering of celebrities, many of whom played themselves. Ricky Gervais, star and writer of the original British version of The Office, performed a digital stand-up comedy set which players can watch by visiting the in-game Split Sides Comedy Club. But one day I wear white boxer shorts. Big wet patch from the way. The comedian Cat Williams, who has appeared in My Wife and Kids and The Tracy Morgan Show, also performed at Split Sides. Far too kind. Thank you. All right, you cut that. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here in Liberty City. An additional set was produced for The Lost and Damned, GTA 4's first expansion, featuring British comedian Frankie Boyle. I've got a friend who does a routine about, oh, don't you hate it when your partner comes to bed and they're cold? They try and get heat off you. And I always think, well, what if you're a necrophiliac? I just think we're the first society in history to be ruled by incompetent fascists. Ted Lasso actor Jason Sudeikis played Richard Bastian, the host of WKTT's right-wing radio show. Okay, now if you can't alliterate a real idea, it's too complicated and I will not blind you with science. While fellow actor and comedian Amid Jalili plays the mega-rich real estate developer Yusuf Amir, who also later appeared in GTA Online. You have to be careful what you say now! Not so long ago, it was all the strippers, the fast cars, the coke. Brooklyn Nine-Nine actress Chelsea Peretti voiced Laurie Williams-Jones, who appeared on the WKTT show Just of Unjust. When he comes to bed, he's all grabbing my ass and treating me like a troll, screaming, Too damaged! Too damaged! Check that ass in the air, troll! I'm about to get aggro! There were countless other cameos too, including German fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld, who played himself and hosted radio station K109. When I go in the streets in Liberty City, too many people try to touch me. That's ridiculous for a man my age, but it happens. I have to tell them, don't touch me. Parks and Rec actor Will Forte played radio host Martin Sirius. Reminder, next week if management doesn't shut it down, we'll have our annual circle jerking contest, where you can win a, a box set of every show I've ever done. Actor and comedian Bill Burr voiced Lost Motorcycle Club biker Jason Michaels in GTA 4 and the Lost and the Damn DLC. Ah, if you were property, then all the brothers would get the show. You. I want you all to myself. <laughs> and was joined by actor and director Adrian Martinez, who played the Lost Club secretary Brian Jeremy. You two want us to end up all dead? Man, Billy was right about you. I knew you were a rat. Now he's gone, man. Jamaican DJ and actor Carl Bradshaw plays himself, hosting the Tough Gong radio station. We have got the real rebel music right here. Tough Gong. UFC fighter Baz Rutan played a parody of himself in Weasel's The Men's Room. Yeah, yeah let's kick it up, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's do this. Actor Michael Boa played Eugene Reaper, one of the bystanders in the Three Leaf Clover heist, who shot Packy's associate, Michael St. Michael Keane. Yeah? They said catching that pass in my high school championship football game was a bad idea, because I broke my leg in 13 places. The irrepressible Iggy Pop can be heard on the airwaves, as the famously shirtless rocker helms the classic rock station Liberty Rock Radio. These songs remind me of why I'm moving out of Liberty City. I'm going to Vice City, where I don't get Iggy or jacked, and you can walk around barefoot without getting an infectious disease in your foot. His former band, The Stooges, can also be heard in the game, with the track I Wanna Be Your Dog. The actress Juliette Lewis is another radio host, hosting modern rock radio station Radio Broker. Hey, you're listening to Juliette, telling you that every day is buy nothing day. Lewis is also a musician, fronting her band Juliette and the Licks, and one of their songs, Inside the Cage, is included in the game. Radio Broker, it's my own band, Juliet and the Licks. Ed Davis killing it on drums, Jason Womack holding it down on bass, and Mr. Mysterious Todd Morse on guitar. 
For the most recent Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar stripped back the celebrity appearances even further. But while the main cast wasn't star-studded, the in-game radio stations did play host to a number of famous names, all of whom play fictionalised versions of themselves. One of those was Paper Towns and Suicide Squad star Cara Delevingne. At the launch of GTA V back in 2013, Delevingne was only 21 years old and had few acting credits, with an appearance in the Tom Stoppard-directed Anna Karenina being her biggest role at the time. She was better known as a model, but the Britain found herself cast as the dance pop obsessed DJ of Nonstop Pop FM. Try and have some fun. Stop giving a damn and dance. You'll be so much happier. Eastbound and Down actor and comedian Danny McBride played Dwayne Earl, the host of the talk radio show Beyond Insemination, which discusses outdoor pastimes like fishing and farming and can be heard in Blaine County. Why should you visit my Blaine County? Well, besides being able to listen to my award winning radio show on Blaine County Radio, the virtuosic bassist of George Clinton's parliament, Bootsy Collins, fronted Space 103.2. Ah, the name is Bootsy, baby. The world's only rhinestone rock star monster of a dog, baby bobble. The late Jamaican reggae producer Lee Scratch Perry spins records as the DJ of the Blue Arc radio station. And God said, let's curse pollution and put pollution in reverse. This wasn't Perry's GTA debut. A number of his songs and that of his band The Upsetters have been included in the series over the years. The chill tones of soft rock musician Kenny Loggins can be heard as the host of Los Santos Rock Radio. Since two of his songs, Highway to the Danger Zone and I'm Free, are included in the game, Loggins has the funny distinction of introducing his own songs on the radio. Let's get some VHS tapes out, watch some movies about lost innocents, jet planes, and gophers. I'm Loggins. Come with me. We're going to do this together. A lesser known celebrity, Jesco White, helms Rebel Radio. White is a tap dancing folk artist, and he handpicked the station's playlist. He's also one of the few famous figures to physically appear in GTA V, playing the dancing outlaw hillbilly who can be seen tap dancing at the foreclosed North Alamo Pier. Outside of the game, White had a couple of documentaries produced about his life and struggles with depression and drugs. He also briefly appeared in the music video for Loser by Beck. Finally, it would be very remiss not to mention Laszlo Jones. Fans of the GTA series will know the radio personality has enlivened many a play session thanks to his comedic interactions with callers and guests. Hi, I'm Michelle Makes. And I'm Laszlo. And this is Chattersphere with, with Michelle, Michelle and Laszlo. God, I just love doing that. Me too! And the radio host has been in every subsequent game in the series. What you may not know is that Laszlo Jones is a real person and a former member of Rockstar. He has worked on multiple Rockstar titles, including writing for Max Payne 3, Red Dead Redemption, and the GTA games. He made his physical debut in GTA 5 with a digital version of himself appearing in missions. It's psycho! Oh, you f***ing prick! Jesus! While his voice can be heard on various radio shows, including Chattersphere, an obvious reference to his station in GTA 3. He also appears in GTA Online with the introduction of nightclubs following the After Hours update. Laszlo also appears on Fame or Shame, GTA's parody of The X Factor, alongside Fred Armisen, who plays Hugh Harrison. Ladies and gentlemen, Hugh Harrison! Woo! So, uh, who are you calling a has-been? Um, Hugh, uh, save the venom for the act. Speaking of GTA Online, Dr. Dre appeared as himself in the KO Perico heist and the contract mission chains. Come on guys, let's get the f*** out of here, I'm getting agitated. You were kinda pissed off before they said anything. The highly influential hip-hop artist and producer songs can also be heard on the soundtracks to San Andreas and GTA V. Fellow Beats headphones entrepreneur and former record producer James Jimmy Iovine also makes a cameo as himself in the KO Perico heist. Rockstar Games writer, record producer and rapper DJ Pooh, real name Mark Jordan, also appears in these missions as himself. In addition, DJ Pooh is the host of the West Coast Classics radio station in the game. As the world waits with bated breath for Grand Theft Auto 6, it remains to be seen how many famous names will be heard or seen in the game. We know the list starts, however, with T-Pain, the rapper and record producer known for his work with Kanye West, Lil Wayne, and Flo Rida. T-Pain is famously a huge fan of GTA Online, and was a longtime member of the No Pixel Roleplay server before he began work on GTA 6. I used to be on No Pixel, then I started working on GTA 6, and they told me I couldn't do RP anymore. You know, like what if somebody took your album and re-recorded it and more people were listening to that, then I'm like, oh, I, okay. Whoever T-Pain's castmates turn out to be, they will have needed some strong self-control to keep their involvement a secret. For more on GTA and all your other favorite games, stick with IGN.